You're on, Mark. Okay, uh, we will hold off on the minutes until we have a full quorum, but we can start the, uh, the meeting with the PowerPoint presentation. Tim, you wanna take that away? Sure, so uh, Brenna and Chandler have been working on the PowerPoint presentation that they will be the two presenters at the uh, town council meeting on the 25th. Um, so we met earlier uh, in the week, making sure that we gave them adequate space. Everybody finished their exams, I think on Monday. So uh, we kind of gave them some breathing room. I didn't bother them uh, at all last week, but um, Tuesday we met, went over uh, the outline. So uh, I think they're ready to show you what where we are and then would ask uh, the group and the committee as to um, what everybody thinks of uh, you know the presentation thus far. We get some input so we can kind of polish it up and finish it up. So uh, Brenna, are you the one that's gonna take it from here? Yeah, I can share my screen and show everyone uh, what we have. Okay, so the presentation is still a work in progress. We completed the outline for it uh, Tuesday, and then I sent out an email yesterday morning, kind of just notifying all the uh, students on the team that it was up and to put in their information sometime before next Wednesday. So not everyone has gone on and put in their information yet. And that's totally fine because it's been like 24 hours. Um, so it starts off with a title slide. We're going to basically go into our background a little bit, explain the flow of the presentation, explain where we're from, kind of when we started. Uh, and then we directly go into the opportunity of kind of why we were brought on to this team. Um, these are just some notes. This is not like the final look of the slide. Um, this is just some notes we have for what this slide should contain. I don't know if anyone has any additions they think that should be made to this slide. This is obviously one that um, heavily involves uh, Tim and the other EDC members. Quick question. Are the slides meant to be leave behinds where you're going to leave them with the um, the town council members, or is are these meant to be purely for presentation purposes? I would assume that they would be given to the town council prior to us even making the presentation, so they can right. kind of go along. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit more detail than than if they were purely for presentational purposes. Cool. Thank you. I just needed that context. Appreciate are, it. Do you think? Are you thinking about? you know just an electronic delivery or you you thinking about like printing it out and distributing yeah that's a that's an internal thing you have to decide i'm, I'm not sure which is the best way to do it which the council prefers to have yeah but i always find it's better when Brenna's is talking she's going to address these particular points that they can kind of look with their eye down at them rather than maybe mm -hmm. at a big screen up and down type thing you know mm -hmm. and they can also if it's on paper and given to them they can also make notes yeah, okay. All right. All right. Um, if we're going to move to the next slide, I will do so. Uh, the next slide, we're going into basically what we did in the first semester, which is a bit of an overview on the three research points we did. Um, we're basically just going to talk about like why we did those three types of research, a general overview of what we found from it, and then that'll be our jump off point into the actual channels that we decided to go into. Um, and then the format for the rest of the presentation Brenna, will be- Brenna, could you go back to that slide and capitalize Wallingford for me? It's gonna just bother me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the format of the next, basically the rest of the slideshow uh, is going to be the two people who, or one person who ran that channel, and then it will go into the channel. So what we're first talking about is the web page redesign. So uh, Sam and Callum's information will be on here. And basically the information we asked from everyone was their uh, degree, year of graduation, all that fun stuff, hometown, relevant experience, um, and then a like professional picture. It might be interesting, especially for Callum and uh, Samantha to talk about what they're doing now, since they are both working together, capitalizing on the work that they have done with Wallingford. 
Yeah. If they want, um, the easiest way for us to include that for me and Chandler to include that in our script would be to basically add speaker notes of like in quotes, be like, say this about our work experience. Um, so if, uh, Sam and Callum, you guys want to work on that at some point, that'd be super duper helpful because I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and it, this would be a really great opportunity for you guys to let them know that, Hey, yeah. you guys exist now as a business. <laughs> yes. And for Especially the branded business. The identification of the rest of the committee, um, at least from what I understand, based on my conversation with both Cal and Samantha, they didn't know each other prior to this, um, you know, this whole SMT exercise. So they met here and this has grown into a, you know, an, a new business relationship. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, in the interest of time, and I guess we're going to have to kind of time this out to see how much time do we have with the council? Is is uh, the chairman going to give us, Tim? Do you know? We're going to, you know, I've told them 25 to 30 minutes. So I think we really, when, as we're rolling this thing out, we, I think we should, you know, be respectful and stay within that 30 minute window. Right. Okay. Not to so, say if they run over, we run over two or three minutes, they're going to chase us off. But uh, yeah. So, uh, Brenna, when uh, you introduce, the, uh, Samantha, for instance, um, and, and you're, you're pretty concise here now. So just make sure you hit the highlights and that's it. In other words, she has uh, she has an MBA in or she's studying for an MBA in whatever um, yep. architectural. I, I can't read it because I'm on my phone and I can't read a darn thing on her on her thing. But um, in other words, try to try to highlight it a little bit. Uh, it, but not make it so you're reading this whole thing verbatim. I guess that's what I'm trying to say, because you're going to have to yeah. move on with a lot of informa information. You, you'll know how to do it. It's, yeah. Uh, we, uh, Chandler and I will like make like a semi script beforehand and run through it, make sure we're not going over on our time limit or anything like that. So we will yeah. make sure that, yeah, we're highlighting, hitting important points and t spending our time really talking about the content. Right. Just for my edification, what's the MBA program in? Marketing? Is it marketing? marketing. Economics. My, my MBA program? Uh, Samantha's, yeah. Uh, it was just a general track MBA, but my undergrad was marketing. There you go. Okay, thank you. Again, I start for me to read on the on the telephone. So, okay, thank you. All right. So Mark, I think what we'll do is, and, you know, it's, it's, it's really what, what when we plan our next meeting, I really think we should be planning a, a dry run of this presentation at our next meeting, you know, prior to the 25th. So we'll keep that in mind so we can time everything out. Of course, Brenna and Chandler will have timed it out. I will have met with them. And, and uh, David, I know you're going to engage heavily in this exercise as well, because you and I have chatted about that. So I think, you know, we'll work through the, the nuances and, and, um, uh, and all that stuff. And let's have a meeting of this committee prior to the 25th. We'll do a dry run so we can make any final changes, but I think we'll prepare that. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yep. Sounds like a plan. All right. Uh, from here, we go into what they worked on, which is the web page redesign. Uh, oh, perfect. You guys left us a whole bunch of notes. That's super duper helpful. So yeah, a picture, some of what they fixed, and then we'll go a lot more in depth into it. Good. Uh, from there, we're hopping into LinkedIn. So my information, Chandler's information, uh, it's basically the same as Sam McCallum's page, just two different people. Um, and then we go into LinkedIn. Uh, we're going to talk both about the content creation that Chandler was doing, as well as some of the sales navigator stuff that I've been doing. And from there... We go into John and Instagram, same setup as a lot of the other pages. Will we have a picture uh, of John, by the way? Will we have a picture of John? Yes, yes. Okay, good. John just has not filled out his information slide. Um, you got it. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, Jack and Facebook. Um, and then Shay and email marketing. And then myself again and college outreach. Um, basically going to just talk about what universities and colleges I contacted 
what we discussed. Um, and then will be the next step slide, which is our ending slide. If you would like to, I, um, I ended up having a MBA consulting team work with Rob Covey from the Wallingford School District because of the work that you guys have done. Rob heard about the incredible stuff and he was so impressed that he's like, hey, Dave, do you have a team for me? So you guys can take credit for creating more partnerships. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that should be added in somewhere in the in the dialogue for sure. All right. If you need me to send like a, a quick write up on that, I will be more than happy to. Yeah, that might be helpful. Make a note. It, it, it might be it might be better to do it when uh, with uh, um, with the the two partners getting together into a business. You know, in other words, you've got two separate things going on, but they both were meaningful from this exercise. So I think it was Samantha, right? Was it Samantha who got mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. Great, and that is the slide presentation of what we have currently. Fabulous. This this will allow for uh, some questions and uh, and hopefully some some good answers when when the uh, council sees this. It's, it's a good start off point. It really is. So, uh, Mark, the uh, the idea was to have um, you know some timeline to this. So, as Brenna laid out, it was you know this is how this started. Um, this is what you know the fall semester provided in terms of understanding you know project scope, research, analysis, interviews with businesses, et cetera. And then come January, you know, the infrastructure has been been developed, start with a soft launch. Uh, as we all know that um, certainly I and I think another of other people in the committee are disappointed we're not a little bit further along. It has nothing to do with the SMT. It has everything to do with resources here. Um, but, um, so we're, you know, kind of, kind of pedal the, uh, the spring, you know, semester here is a, is a soft launch and a, um, a, you know, deliberate and purposeful entry into this space so that we can make sure that we, we, uh, uh, you know, do it right. And we, we don't create any unknowns, uh, in terms of, you know, brand damage, everything is, you know, on the up and up with a more positive, uh, and aggressive approach, uh, once we hit September and hopefully we'll have that resource on board you know, but by the beginning of the summer and be able to run hard, you know, in September. This becomes part of the, uh, you know, EDC's marketing DNA uh, go forward. So that's kind of the timeline that we tried to lay out. So, yeah, um, our, uh, is Joe still on board to give us an introduction? And are you still on board to kind of wrap it up? Oh, yeah. No, I, I certainly will. You know, the the I think it was your suggestion that uh, yeah, you and Joe intro and then I wrap it up. Yep, that's, that's the plan. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'd be more than happy to be involved, but I don't want to stretch the time out that I'm doing an intro. So I, I'm, I'm, Joe can do it any way he wants. But I think Joe being chair should say, you know, we are trying to find ways to market the town. Um, we've had billboards in the past. We, we just have to take it to the next level. And this is how we feel we're taking it to the next level. You know, something along that line, to, to kind of setting the stage for Brenda to come in and do her her part. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be a good idea if you, Joe, and I met just to take, make sure that we talk about the, uh, the, the points um, yeah. that we want to make. Exactly, yeah. So, and that should, for, for Joe, it should be just scripted out for him. He'd be more than happy to have it scripted for him with all the key yeah. points, you know, yeah. so we can do that, yeah. So any other thoughts from the team as far as um, you know the track we're on with the uh, with the PowerPoint presentation? I think it's a great job. I think it's going to be a very meaningful presentation. I think some people are going to be sitting up in their chair saying, "Oh my God!" Yeah, and I think it's going to be a good presentation. Yeah. All right. Again, you know. Um, Objective is, is uh, certainly to introduce the council to the work that's been done. And this, um, you know, that this is a, a new venture for the town of Wallingford. I think for most municipalities, frankly, I don't know that many municipalities are doing this, uh, if any, uh, that I'm familiar with. So um, I think that's, that's uh, it bodes very well for us. But 
it's also a, a an opportunity to, to highlight uh, the student team and, and i want to make sure that we uh those, those slides reflect that that um, this is your opportunity to brag about who you are and what you've accomplished so i want you to not be shy about that mm -hmm. all right brenna chandler you guys need any other direction as you're putting this together or? not yeah. right now yeah i don't think so okay on to the next item tim yeah, so just, um, I wasn't being rude when I took that phone call while the presentation was being made, but it was Rob Fritz uh, saying that he did not have a, did not have the link for the meeting, so I, um, or he misplaced it because I know he got it. But anyway, uh, I just, I sent it to him, so I, I'm a little surprised that he hasn't signed on yet. So uh, anyway, I expect is, An is Anthony on? Not yet, okay. I know he's muted, but he says he's... Uh, Anthony uh, in the chat does not have a microphone. So he is uh, on and listening, but he cannot talk to us. Oh, okay. All right. I am here. Okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm getting into the chat. Yeah, I see right. that. Okay. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll save the, the minutes, I guess. So, um, yeah. all right. That's, that's a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so digital channel progress reports. Um, We've been doing a, a little bit of work with the website. So uh, Callum, if you wouldn't mind um, starting that off. And I know, Mark, um, this is kind of new, but you can see Stacy is on the call. So um, she has been working with uh, with Callum and Samantha about some uh, website changes. She's been the uh, interface with um, Web Solutions, our vendor. So a few things to talk about there. Um, and also Stacy is gonna be, she's taking the minutes um, where in the past, um, I've taken them and then translated them, and, and but we're cutting that step out. So uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining us this morning, Stacy. Uh, although your name is not Kevin Coons, we know who you are. Um, and uh, so why don't I turn it over to Callum uh, for an update on the website? So where we left off um, after our meetings with Web Solutions and Stacy, uh, we had relayed our changes to the new, uh, for example, the, the logo grid to Web Solutions, and they got back to us with several different quotes for the amount of um, the costs for implementing the work that we had uh, asked them to do. And so from my understanding where we are right now is we are now in a place to make a decision based on the uh, quotes that they gave us on which elements of the work that we want them to do we're going to actually move forward with um, and other news too so we finalized the logo grid for all the companies that we want included on the featured section and um, at this point we i think we're trying to decide whether or not um, we add the current image slider as an option to hide rather than just completely delete um, which is one of the things that they recommended and um, other than that, I believe we're moving forward with adding the logo grid uh, um, as a, as one of the definite options. But Tim, was there anything else that I, I left out? Um, Stacy, there were there were three elements you just want to talk about. So there was the uh, the business rotator. Um, Sure. Callum, so, can you can you share your screen, Callum, so that you know maybe go on and pull up our website so we can kind of point point the committee uh, to the elements we're talking about because sure. we're very familiar, but um, maybe a good idea to remind them. Yeah, let me do it. These changes are coming in at a price tag just under a thousand bucks. So um, what we want to make sure of is that we are all in agreement. Uh, we make these changes and don't have to go back and amend anything else because uh, this gets expensive pretty fast. So. so this is where we're talking about adding the grid of logos of the featured companies that live in Wallingford. Um, and so what they had, um, they had given us a quote to add that grid of logos. And then they had also given us the option to add four logos in the slider at a time. Um, and so I think we had, uh, we're, we're heavily leaning towards the first option and having all 12 logos in a three by four grid here instead. Um, in addition, one of the other quotes that had given us 
two was the option to hide this slider here rather than uh, completely delete it. And in which, in whatever case we decide um, in the future, we would have the option to show it again. Um, I'm personally of the mind that we don't need to show this again. And I, I don't think that, um, I mean, this wasn't a part of the original design that we had supplied them. And so this is something that they had come up with, but um, I don't know that we need to pay to be able to um, potentially show this again in the future. And then lastly, the other change that uh, we had asked them to make was adding the company logo of the company um, rep that we're using a testimonial for. And so they had uh, offered to either put it to the right here or beneath the, uh, beneath the company name. So um, that's the third element that they had given us a, a quote for. So, uh, any any questions from the committee, or any of the members of the SMP? So, I just want to understand. So, number one, this is on the uh, list that was sent to us. Recommended updates to the website. Number one, we probably don't care about keeping Radial on for the future. If we want to, we'll add it, but we don't have to worry about hiding it. Is is that what we're saying? No. So, so. Uh, we're actually, so number one is we're adding a completely new uh, grid of logos of the featured companies that we feel represent Wallingford and um, add some social oh, proof. Oh, you know what, Callum, can I just stop you for one second? So yep. I didn't forward this to you, Callum, and I apologize, but number one for Mark on the form that he has says hiding the business rotator. Oh, number two says adding the logos to the testimonial ribbon. Okay. And number three has the logo grid. So that's where the confusion is coming from. Gotcha. Okay. okay. <laughs> that, that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, in that case, number one is is hiding this uh, image slider right here that we're looking at right now, this carousel. And so yeah. um, that's that's basically coming about because it was something that, um, you know, wasn't in the first round of changes that we'd asked for that sure. they had recommended. And yeah, after nice. showing this to the committee and everyone else, we had um, unanimously decided that it wasn't something that we wanted to keep. So they're yeah. providing a to make it an option that we can hide and then show again in the future. But um, I personally don't think that we would need to show it again in the future. So yeah, I don't. From my, from, from my perspective, I agree with you on that. So th then number two is adding the logos. That's the eight or twelve logos that you wanted to, that we wanted to add onto the pages, and that's the one and a half to two and a half hours. Is that right? And am I right in saying that to you, Callum? I, I believe that's number two. Yeah, I, I don't know what the time specific was, but that was the grid that Tim just showed up uh, to show to the camera on that paper. Right, that uh, eight or twelve. Okay, and then number three is logo grid display. Uh, oh, it's right here. Twelve logos. It said it will be editable so that we can <clears throat> update the logos as we need them. There's a desktop version four by three. There's a mobile version three wide. They said it would be four to six hours, anywhere between four hundred and eighty and seven hundred and twenty dollars. I guess depending on the time they need to do it. So, it, it, you're suggesting that we do that and keep that going the way it is, right? I mean, I have it as number three, but you. Yeah, I, I think that should be our our first priority out of these three elements. Okay, getting good. That, getting that uh, logo grid up for sure, and that was okay. you know, that was the, our first uh, idea here. Okay, and then on the bottom with number four, it just says estimated cost. So either Stacy or Tim can tell me, was this just an addition of everything if we took it all? Is that what it was? Or is there more to be done with this $960? I'm not quite sure. That's Stacy. Um, no, that would be for all three of those items listed. Okay, good. It was just an addition. Right. Great. And okay, thank you. And Stacey, does that include adding the logo to the testimonial carousel? That does well? include the logo, and that includes um, our capability to put the rotator back on. But if you don't want that capability, then that would lower the price a little bit. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we need it personally, but if anyone has right. um, you know, a, a reason or idea for why we might want to add it back, I'm open yep. to hearing, but... 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, this is my perspective, and I, I welcome some input from the committee. I, I agree with you. I think number one for us, which is hiding the business rotator, let's just forget about it and not worry about it. We want to add that that logo to the testimonial, and then we want to have the logo rid of the 12 logos. Um, so it'll be something It'll be something like seven dollars $800, I guess, uh, uh, by the time we, we do the spending, if we do it. Uh, any any input from the committee? Anybody have any thoughts? No, I agree. Right, uh, this, is, I, I, this is Andy. I, I dialed in on the phone as well. I don't know what happened to my microphone here, but um, so it, are you suggesting that you want to uh, just delete the slider rather than just hide it? Yep. So with it's it, it's kind of a WordPress ish sort of format. I actually had a website on their system before um, and I had access to the back end to go in and make some 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 pretty minor modifications to it. Um, with the slider, if you delete it and you completely take it off, um, if you ever want to put in a slider again, because this slider the slider is something that you can modify. If you ever want to put a slider in, you can change the whole look of it images and so forth and, and you kind of have it so to simply turn it off takes it off of the viewable website but you still have it i, I don't know if in the future there may be something that you want to have a slider for and you already have it uh, and you wouldn't have to pay to have them re-establish a slider it's just uh just a thought it's it's a it's a toggle switch it's an either on or off kind of a thing so um I don't is I, I didn't see the quote specifically or the is there a, a, a substantial charge to turn that off? A hundred dollars, hundred bucks, hundred bucks to, to to hide it. A month or just one set? No, one time, one time, okay. just one time. Yeah, yeah that's a, a that's, yeah, that, that's a lot of money to do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess for the hundred bucks, holy cow. Hope you never have to <laughs> add another one back in. It'll be much yeah. more than that. Yep. Yeah, if you have to rebuild it, you're absolutely right. It will be a lot more. Yeah. I, I tell you, uh, you, you know, as an aside, you do have the option to enter the back end of your website and, and learn some things in that. Uh, in the, it, like I said, it's, it's very similar to WordPress. It just has some, you know, some unique things about it. But uh, when I had a, a website on on that platform, I was able to go in and make some minor changes. I had somebody in the office who was had a little bit of training on it, and um, you know, it, it is quite simply going in and toggling that off. Um, so, you know, for that effort, when you have somebody engaged uh, on the team to do that, you may want to have them learn a little bit about the back end of that system, so you can go in and, and make small changes like this. So a part of our evaluation process on doing this before we even approached web solutions, we actually went through the back end and um, uh, Stacy and I and Tim all went through together. And then Stacy and I looked at different options when we were evaluating how we might implement parts of these elements before we even asked for a quote. Um, and I, I actually also spent time going through it myself. And so uh, with whatever current version of the way that the site's being built, we were not able to do any of the elements that we wanted, make any of the changes we wanted to with the elements that we got quotes for. Um, and we, yeah, I mean, asking them for quotes was was what we had to turn to because it, it wasn't possible with the, the C panel. So we did we did evaluate that as a, as a part of the process for sure. Gotcha. And I, they I did say the cost for this is high because when they hide the rotator, they are going to create it so that I can go back in and I can flip that switch. And then we can yeah. make any, um, we can put in whatever images or whatever we want in it. So that's why it costs a little more because they're actually making it so that I can go in and turn it back on or whoever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just out of curiosity, Cal, maybe as a, as a, as an aside, if uh, if we can get together on a call and, and hop in the back end, I had, you know, I, I don't know what you see when you go in the back end on yours. I know I, I remember what I saw on the back end of ours. We had some 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 uh, opportunity to, to make some changes. So what they allow you to see 
versus what I was able to see, maybe two different things. Um, but again, you know, we're, we are where we are now. And I just, uh, I'm sorry if I prolonged the decision on this. I was just curious. Um, yeah, no, no worries. Um, good conversation. Sorry, go ahead. I think what we're, what we're, uh, and I don't want to publicly, <laughs> um, you know, uh, be unjust to the, to the vendor, but, um, uh, yeah, they, they, they charge a fair amount of money to do, you know, some stuff that's what I'm, you guys are convincing me is relatively simple. So uh, I don't necessarily feel that we're getting the best value, but I think we've got to get past that. Just so let's get this thing set. seems Agreed. to me that based on Stacy's uh, comment a second ago, that it does give us some flexibility. Bottom line is it's a hundred bucks. Um, you know, again, if we ever decided to change it in the future, it's going to cost a heck of a lot more than that to change it. So, um, I, I think it, my recommendation would be, we don't certainly don't need it now, so no disagreement there, but for the flexibility, um, it's probably a small price to pay. I probably recommend we just let them do it. So, so what, you're suggesting, <laughs> what you're suggesting, Tim, is let's just keep it then. Um, and if we want to bring the radial screen back in three months from now, we already have it there. It's just hidden. Yeah, it's not the radial screen, it's the functionality. So we could use that functionality for something else. So what we're putting up, what we're proposing to put up is a, you know, a grid of 12 logos that are stayed. Yeah. It doesn't move. It's just, and, and if we decide to do something in the future where we want to take and, and rotate the logos or do something, you know, a little different with that space, we'll have the ability to do it. Um, and it costs us a hundred bucks at this point to have the ability to, to make that a movable component of the website. So. I, right. I, 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 we can talk about this forever, I guess. I, I just want to get it straight in my mind. This, this allows it to be a movable component of the website, not necessarily with Radial. So if we wanted to put in some other business other than Radial, we have the function that we can put it in because it's movable, but it would cost us more money to put that other person or that other company's name in and whatever we want to do. Is that correct? I just want to know that. Cal? Uh, no. So <clears throat> it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost us any money as it is to change what the company is. The issue is that we don't have any purpose really for having a, an image carousel that shows off one image. Um, and it's actually, it's not, good user experience practice, best practice either. And so the idea to have this slider um, didn't come from us in the first place. It came from Web Solutions. It was their recommendation after we had given them the first implementation of our uh, redesign and they recommended it. And after showing it, after we got the result and we showed this to the entire committee, we all agreed that it wasn't something that fit with our uh, design and it didn't fit with our um, our objective either. Uh, the whole purpose of having the company logos as a part of um, showing what best represented Longford was to add social proof and to recognize, hopefully people when they come across the website would recognize and um, associate with some of the logos that we're showing off. And so having, for example, just an image of the front company of radio doesn't really build that um, social proof or uh, credibility that we're looking for. And so the, the logo grid is entirely separate and does a lot more than that. But um, the question that we're, we're uh, talking about right now is whether or not um, we delete it entirely or we what they want to do is, is charge basically for the ability to um, have it as an option to hide or show it whether or not we choose to do that. So what, um, what I think Tim and uh, Anthony were talking about is uh, when, we when we delete it entirely, we're losing the functionality of the image slider um, entirely. So whether or not that's the company uh, office front or another image set entirely, we're losing that functionality rather than just um, rather than paying them to hide or show it, in which case we'd have the option to show it, uh, show image sliders in whatever, whatever other format we'd want. But um, personally, I can't foresee another 
case in which we'd want to do that. But um, cause again, this isn't, it's really not great user experience, best practices anyway. So, um, but if you guys foresee another option in which we'd want to use that, then it may make sense. Does this affect the user experience at all? No. If we kept it, does it affect the user experience? They hide it. It's not on anymore. Does it affect the user experience? Do they have to do an extra click because of it or any of that kind of stuff? No. Okay. Then for the hundred dollars, I think we should keep it. Um, because I thought it was, we always had to bring radial up. And if we know we have this in our, in our toolbox for the future, um, for the hundred dollars, I think it's worth the investment. My, my opinion. It might also uh, help to know that the radio logo is on the grid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't the company as such. It was just, I was thinking that we always had to pop them back up. And if you wanted to change to another company, now we're going to charge you another hundred dollars or whatever it is, you know, and we can go down this rabbit hole forever, you know, but you're telling me, no, that's not the case. We're just hiding it. And it's a functionality that we'll have in the back uh, back office whenever we need it, that type of thing. Yep. Thank you. Uh, anybody else on, on this subject? And, just, and I, just, I'd be interested in knowing, uh, taking like a little vote to find out where we're at on it. Just real, real quick, and not to beat a dead horse, but, um, Caleb, you're saying that it's not a good um, user, um, you know, friendly thing to have on there. Why? So, the what I'm saying is that the image slider like this isn't great user experience best practices at all. Uh, and that's because it requires people to click through to see a lot of different images rather than showing one relevant image. Um, okay. Beyond that, I mean, there's no text associated with it either. So it's just, I guess, an option to include a bunch of images that all represent or associate with one thing. Um, in which case, again, most, a large majority of people will not ever see beyond the first image because people have very short attention spans. And so yeah. if you want to see, if you want people to see something because it's really important, yeah. you would never want to put it um, in a slider because the odds of them actually seeing it are pretty low. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I So where do we stand as far as uh, the committee is concerned? Do we want to keep it or shall we can it? Patricia? I vote to can it, um, yeah. but let the majority, you know, vote well. Okay. It'll be majority for sure. Oh, yeah. uh, Anthony? Yeah, can it. If can that's, it. Uh... Okay, is, is Rob on? I am. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 it, it sounds like from what Callum is saying and everybody else, it's not necessary. Um, but to your point, if we can, if, if we can just turn it off and that does the same thing as canning it and we have it for future reference, not that we'll ever use it for a hundred bucks. I, I, I voted to, uh, to keep it, but just turn it off for now. Okay. Uh, I, I, I tend to, Tim, where, where are you on this? I think we just turn it off and, and keep it. I, you know, I'm thinking about it, it could be we could use it to let's say the chambers having an event. We want to we want to be good stewards and promote it. We want to, yeah. it just gives us a little bit of flexibility. And I think, yeah. you know, frankly, for 100 bucks, I, you know, I completely understand and respect Callum's position. You, you're the expert. And I totally get it. But we've already spent more than 100 dollars worth of time talking about spending. <laughs> bucks. I, mean, I, just, I just think just just. Tuck it, tuck it behind the curtain, and let's move on. That's my opinion, but I would, I would just hang on to it. How, how much am I getting paid for my time on this meeting now? <laughs> really? I, I, I didn't realize that. Let me. <laughs> he didn't say whose money. He didn't say uh, whose money. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I think. Okay, let, let's end the conversation. I think we should keep it, and we'll go from there. All right, and Callum, we're all set with the, uh, we can just scroll to the um, logos on the testimonial. So, um, so that's, um, they're gonna be. Just... So here we're adding the, uh, we're just adding the company logo to, right. um, I, th I think on desktop versions, it's just gonna be to the right here. Yep. And then uh, 
obviously when we go to mobile, we don't have the same space on uh, width wise. So we would add it beneath. But So they're saying it's going to cost us 300 bucks to put those on there. In your opinion, do it, not do it. I mean, I think, I think that's pretty expensive, but um, yeah, I, I mean, this this is something that you know, it was actually part of the design and that yep. um we had all agreed that we wanted so this i think is easier to justify then okay uh, yeah all right then I, I think we're good on all three subjects uh, mr chairman very good then uh, we'll go along with uh, the suggestions as such and let the let the fees be levied let's see yeah it's a it's a gulp and a swallow hard but yeah. Um, yeah, we wanted to have the conversation so that we do it once and be done with it because going back to them to redo stuff gets pricey fast as we see. Okay. Anything else on the website? Um, yeah, I just want to recommend one more time if we're already going to be in communication with web solutions and asking to make changes. Um, I'm not sure if Shay had discussed with anybody about adding the newsletter sign up link like a section that just says sign up for a newsletter so that people from the website have the capability to have access to the ongoing email marketing it's important that's that's important we want to do that yeah so maybe even just asking them how much that would be and or if we had the uh, ability to do that on our end I, I was speaking I with Shay, and she has created um, a pop-up that would come up on the website, and she was going to come on, and I thought she was going to be here today to talk about it. But um, So she created a pop-up. It has the EDC logo on it, and then you can put in your email. You can select your category, and I was hoping she was going to be on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I forgot we had mentioned the pop-up was the the better um, way to go about that. So I just wanted to make sure we hadn't forgotten that. Okay. Yeah. That's just being done with MailChimp, right? Yes. Okay, so that, that should be really easy for Web Solutions to implement. Okay. <laughs> I think they all are, but they, they see yeah. opportunity knocking Callum, right? <laughs> They never said it wasn't easy. They just said it's expensive. Well, this one, this one is just copying and pasting in some code. So I, I'd like to see their justification for more than 30 minutes of work. We need you to review all our bills from now on. That's what you need to do. We'll do. <laughs> I'll audit all of the, the bills and quotes. Yeah. Okay. What do we have next? <laughs> Oh, frankly, I was going to segue into Shay, but uh, now I do realize that she is not on the call. So I'm going to send her a text in a minute. But um, uh, let's see. John, why don't you talk about uh, Instagram, please? Give us an update. Um, so for Instagram, um, we're close to 130 followers, which is kind of short of the goal that I was hoping for. Um, but with that, um, I've been having some trouble getting... Um, people to follow the account back once I reach out and follow them. Um, and the main issue that I've seen is that people will kind of take it as like a, a follower to add to their, to their ratio and they're not following back. Um, so I kind of have to find a new market to target rather than kind of um, like the, the age group that I was focusing on. I kind of need to look into people that won't, won't focus on the ratio as much, um, which isn't really an issue that I assumed I would, run into but um um a good thing that i have found is that the uh the likes are increasing which is definitely an improvement because um prior to um other posts we've seen very low likes um and then the, the most recent one has the most out of out of all the posts by a lot um so that's kind of a, a good sign that the followers are um meaningful followers like they're people that are going to interact rather than people that are just following and they're just going to um, see the post scroll or not even see them at all. Um, so kind of just going off of that, I kind of have to um, look for a new way to find people that will follow the account back, that will provide value to it. 
and then from there, um, those people will also bring bring likes to the account, which um, which will help the account grow. And that's kind of all that I have. Questions or comments? John's presentation. Okay, who's next? Sorry, I muted so I could talk to uh, send a message. John, our, our goal was to take and, and um, uh, double our, our uh, followers. And how many followers did you see we had at this point? Uh, cl close to 130. Okay. Okay, so we're all right. So we're looking to get to about one sixty. Is that a reasonable number? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, if if I didn't run into the issue with people um, not following back, then that would have been that would have been easily um, achieved. Okay, so I kind of have to go back. And the the past the past day and a half, I've been trying to like um, find a, the the new group, but we um, I'm trying not to run up the the following number very high, because then it's going to create a bad ratio for us which kind of doesn't establish the credibility that we need to establish to kind of looking for a way to grow the follower, the followers without um, people not following back, which is going to bring our ratio up for a reason that doesn't really um, have bring any value to us because there are people that we're following that aren't, aren't even seeing our posts. So um, in, in terms of, uh, groups, you were going to go out and try to find more and more Wallingford businesses that had Instagram accounts. Yes. That's our target audience. Yes. And then from there, um, find people that follow those accounts that are bringing value to those accounts that can also bring value to ours. Okay. All right. Sounds like you're on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You all set, Tim? Uh, yes, I am. I'm sorry, Mark. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So who's on next? Is Shay or who's on? Um, well, we want to go back to LinkedIn. Um, so Chandler, you want to talk about uh, LinkedIn? We had some targets in terms of uh, audience growth there from the last meeting. Yeah, um, we are now at uh, 191 followers. So again, we didn't quite make it to the follower ratio that we were looking for. But um, we increased our followers about uh, 15, I believe. Yeah, so, on the sales navigator end, I think I sent out around 125 invites. So the turnover from that wasn't great. I've been going back and editing our messaging with the invites and I have seen an increase in like responses to us with the new messaging, um, which more so focuses on bringing them to the uh, LinkedIn, like Wallingford page, because the problem with sales navigator is it mostly invites them to like it's linked to Tim's account because you can't necessarily link it directly to a business account. So we have to put in a link to the business account. So the messaging at first was more so focused on like following Tim's account with like a side note of like, we also have this business page. So I've been editing the messaging to more focus on follow this business page. Um, and it's definitely seen a bit of an increase. I think that has helped. Okay. So just a general comment, I think, um, you know, is, is um, you guys are done with finals now and, and um, hopefully you have a, a little bit of breathing room. Uh, I'm going to ask you to really step on the gas pedal on some of these initiatives uh, between now and, and you know, we're, we're probably looking to kind of wrap up for the summertime pretty soon. So uh, probably not shortly after the town council meeting. So because, um, you know, what we had said right from the get go was uh, that we would you know do this right through May. And then um, just reevaluate and see where we're going to go, which the committee needs to do. But uh, I'm just going to ask you that to uh, just redouble your efforts at this point. Let's see, um, you know, uh, what we can do in terms of getting the, uh, you know, the, the follower um, yeah. numbers up. Okay. I've been focusing mostly on Wallingford, uh, like business owners at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm making my way through the list that you sent me. Um, 
on like the CT business page. Right. Um, so making my way through that. And then I will be starting in on C-suite individuals. Okay. All right. Very good. And just as an aside, uh, you, you know that we're paying, I don't know, 80 some odd bucks a month for the sales navigator. So um, I'd be interested in, 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 you know, your opinion as to whether that's something we should continue to use. Is it an effective tool? Is it, is it generating, you know, that value or not? So, uh, uh, and we are doing that on a month to month. We did not sign along yeah. with that. So. I think that sales navigator is an effective tool because if you look at some of the people that Brenna messages, um, they also line up with the people who like recently followed because they give you both lists. Yeah, I think it's a, a good tool. I do think at some point you will hit like a plateau where you kind of run out of meaningful people to invite. I don't think we've hit that yet. And I don't think we're very close to hitting that yet because we still haven't started in on the C-suite list. But I do think it is something that will eventually not be needed. But I think that's still in the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Comments from the committee? I do want to mess, uh, mention, Tim, that when we send out invites, some people, not many, but they do respond back. Um, so I need to send you um, the link. There are like two people on Sales Navigator who message wanting to like just like chat. Um, so I will message you that link to get to those so you can look at their responses and message them back as needed. Okay. Great. All right, so um, I did send uh, Shay a text that had not heard back from her, so apparently uh, something's come up and she's unavailable. Um, so we will not be able to do the, anything, any update on the email uh, channel, other than I think Stacy's already added uh, that you know, Shay is, did the pop-up or is doing the pop-up for the website. Has she done that or is she doing it? She has it created. I gave her the changes that we asked her to put on that were just aesthetic, but um, Mm -hmm. we were just going to see if everyone liked it and if we think that it's something that we should put on. So could you just explain the experience, uh, Stacey? So what will happen is when they go onto the website, a pop-up will show and at the top it has our EDC logo underneath is where they enter their email there's a drop down box where they can pick whether it's manufacturing retail restaurant other and i think there was one more and there is an option for them to just hit an x and avoid it altogether or they can enter their information get added directly to our mailchimp email list it'll go into the proper category and that way we can organize our emails that way through MailChimp. <clears throat> we looked into the pop-up issue where I know you used to have to click at the top right corner if to allow pop-ups for the site and things like that. She said that shouldn't be a factor. And there is not an option to not show again. So like sometimes you go onto a website and there'll be a little square that says, don't show this again but that way they enter their email and they enter their information, so. So Sam, is that, um, any any comments on that? Um, No, that sounds right. I also, I'm not sure if I was gonna have a separate report or maybe I should have interjected when we were talking about the website, Um, but I have some Google Analytics to share. Okay, all right, so just before we move on, so the, uh, the web solutions pop up that's going to go on the website. Now we're, we're kind of cross pollinating our platforms now, right? So I, I, I think that I like that idea, and that's the whole idea. So great. Um, all right, um, then why don't you go ahead, Sam? So really quickly, um, I just was benchmarking from the 30 days before we had started as a team um, in October. And before we had made any changes, and that was what Callum and I had originally looked at to see just where we were at in terms of the website and then make recommendations based on that. And then I also compared all the information that I found there to where we are right now in the last 30 days from yesterday. And I just wanted to say that 
we are up in terms of sessions by 26%, which is great. And um, the average session has changed on the landing page, specifically the business page from 14 seconds to a minute and 43 seconds. Um, and that just goes to show that people are actually spending time and in engaging with the content that we've created, because I think it aligns a lot more closely with why they're brought to that page. And I think that has a lot to do with where they're um, finding like the, the source that they're coming from. Um, and yeah, so the bounce rate, the sessions and bounce, bounce rate kind of go hand in hand because our sessions have increased. The bounce rate has also decreased, um, which is huge because that just goes to show again, like a bounce rate is um, similar to the drop-off rate, but the number of people that interact with the site versus who shows up on the page and immediately clicks off. That's the bounce rate. Um, and that has gone down significantly um, from for like 16%. And that's a pretty good metric right now. And so I think we're headed in a good direction. And that just shows that the changes we've made um, are justifiable by the data. And that's also something that we can share in the presentation. And I can add some of those for Brenna and Chandler. That's good news, and, and your last sentence is what I was thinking. You know, so as we're presenting, or you're presenting, um, to the council, it's not just a chronology of what's taken place and what's been built, but let's let's show some results. So you, you just shared a couple of things where people are staying on the, on the site exponentially longer than they were before. Um, so you know, the bounce rate is lower, the stay rate is higher, which is really what we're, we're driving for. So, and I think as part of the presentation, Brennan Chandler, as you guys are weaving this all together and everybody else is sending information in, keep in mind the council needs to see how all of these individual channels work together, how, yeah. how are they woven together, right? And in, in, into, in, into a complete digital presence for the town of Wallingford. Yeah, Sam, um, I think those numbers are important to include like not just in what Chandler and I are saying, but actually on the slides. If you want to make a slide after the like website redesign slide and put in like the increase of like how long people are staying on the website, how many people are visiting the website and stuff like that. And then John, just for the Instagram part, maybe put in uh, follower growth numbers. Um, yeah. That can be added a little closer to the date of the presentation just so it's as up to date as possible, but just to keep in mind that that would be a good uh, bit of information to have. So in my mind, I'm, I'm saying that, um, so again, there's that chronology. You you've go through you go through your presentation, you've, you've introduced the process, you've introduced the, the infrastructure that's been built out. Uh, we've already gone through the, the where's and why's and all that. And then what a great wrap up slide or is to say, and, and these are some of the outcomes that we're experiencing right now. And we haven't even, you know, stepped on the gas all the way. Right. So um, I think that's a good way to kind of, you know, so do you think your presentation and say, okay, my final comment. then do you think um, what would be best would be included instead of including follower counts and the uh, Google analytics numbers, like right after talking about those sections, do you think having a whole slide that's like on all of our pages, these are the follower counts and these are the Google analytics so that we talk about all those numbers at once? I yeah, think specifically I, I, for the website, I can just like, it's a, a one metric kind of thing. Like you can just show 1% change and that justifies a lot. So I, I can just throw that directly into the one slide. I don't think it needs its own. Okay. I guess I'm more asking, should it be on the slides like, should that be on the website slide, the Instagram numbers be on the Instagram slide, or should at the very end of the presentation, we have one slide that says all of the numbers and it's like, I, this is the growth. I think put it with whatever um, medium you're talking about. And then at the end concluding slide, just reiterate that the data right. shows what improvements are made. I was just going to say yep. that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's better to give them the information in pieces especially when it's analytics, because all of a sudden they're going to be snoring and you, and you wonder what's going on. Uh, so if you give them in pieces, they'll, they'll, they'll be able to digest that a lot better. And then at the very end, you're just, as it was just said, 
you're just reiterating what you brought through in the presentation. So if they want to see all the numbers together, that can be right at the end. Yeah. And I would also suggest that, um, you know, numbers, I know this group well enough to know, you start throwing numbers and they start getting analytical. They start, it's really not where we want their minds to go in this meeting. So um, it's not the numbers necessarily, it's the significance behind the numbers. So we've, we've, we built an audience. So we'll work on some of that when we, you know, put, put together what your thoughts are. And when we go through a couple of edits, we'll, we'll work on that. But yeah. And you know, if you start getting into deep number stuff, it's just going to take the, the objective of the meeting is to educate them as to this initiative, the whys, why are we doing it? How did we do it? You know, and then here's where we are. And yes, we've, we've already seen some nice, uh, nice progress uh, without, showing them a slide full of numbers that they're going to start to digest and dissect. And, you know, 179 followers may feel good to us, but someone may say, that's all you got. Uh, and, and you just, it becomes so subjective from their standpoint, we've got to be careful, but we'll, I'll, we'll walk through that. Okay. Any, any other reports from the, uh, um, Brenna, I don't, has there been, there hasn't been much movement on the, um, College outreach, right? No, uh, I did hear back from one community college eventually. It took them a while. Uh, Gateway did reach out to me. Uh, it had taken them so long because their career center has been going through um, a lot of employee turnover and rehiring. And so the guy who was taken over uh, has been having to go through a lot of emails that have been like super backlogged. Um, and so he had like just gotten to my email from January, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. So I talked to him. Uh, I think where we're at with college outreach is at this point, college is out for the summer. Um, there's not a whole lot going on in like career fair news and stuff like that. Um, what I would suggest is reaching out to the contacts I've already, like I have all the contacts kind of written down. And what we've talked about over the past semester uh, would be going back to that in August or September and recontacting people and figuring out what they're doing for the fall semester and then getting a jump start on it uh, and getting that information out to businesses like as soon as possible. Makes sense. Okay. Any other comments? On that subject. All right. Any other general comments from the student marketing team? No, uh, you're going to um, excuse the team now, right? To go into the rest of the meeting, Tim? That would be my thought. I just wanted to ask Sam. Why don't we, did, set, why don't we set up a time though that we uh, can yeah. bring you? So from a timing standpoint, uh, Mark, I would say our council meeting is on the 25th. Yeah. All right. So Chandler and Brenna will be making the presentation. It would be nice if everybody could uh, put it in their calendar and join that meeting um, electronically if you if you can. It does start at 6.30 p.m. Uh, and Stacy will make it a point to make sure that everybody um, on the team gets the council agenda for that meeting. Now, the council packets, since we're going to be sending them a, a paper copy of uh, the PowerPoint presentation, and again, this is all public meeting, so it's public meeting protocol, uh, the council packet, I believe, goes out on Friday the 21st, which means that we need to have everything done and completed no later than Thursday the 20th. I would recommend that we have it done and completed a day before that, which is a week uh, as the 19th, which is next Wednesday. Right? So uh, all of a sudden you can feel the time window going like this, right? So... Um, I think we should meet as a committee, Mark, uh, next Wednesday, the 19th, to go through a final uh, run through of the, the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Were you wanted, was, you're looking at the same time, 8 or 8.30, something like that? That certainly works for me. Yeah. I, I have a Wallingford collaborative that I'll get a hold of uh, Kathy on, and we'll, we'll change that. Um, so, uh, that, and that's, uh, what do you want to do, 8 or 8.30? I think 8.30 is, uh, works for the, for the team. I think the last time they preferred 8.30 to 8 o'clock. But um, so let's talk about availability. 
Um, is there anybody on this in this meeting right now that cannot make next Wednesday, the 19th at 830? I'm free. All right. So it sounds like everybody on the call can. Um, all right. Great. All right. Then I think we I, should. Tim, did you, you said when, uh, what, Tuesday the 18th at what time? No, 19th, Wednesday the 19th. Wednesday the 19th 8.30. Yeah. You said the 25th, yeah? What did you say about the 25th, Tim? 25th is 25th. the council meeting. Oh, okay. And that's at 6.30. 6.30, thank you. I'm sorry, Anthony, was the, was the 19th at 8.30 good? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. I have to move something, but I can... Uh, I can move it. Okay. Can you repeat the date for the presentation and the time? The date of the presentation is Tuesday, May 25th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Right, so I think we've got our next meeting locked in. And Chandler, Brenna, and team, obviously you're going to be feeding them information, but uh, we are now on a fast track to finish it up, polish it up, and the objective of the 19th is going to be we can keep it a single a single subject agenda, and that is the PowerPoint presentation. Um, so hopefully you guys will have this thing completely built with the appropriate art, photographs, et cetera. It's in presentation mode, and um, you will have on your own timed it out in terms of uh, your presentations. You, you will have decided who's going to present which slides. Um, I would say for your timing purposes, you should probably make sure it stays, I'd say, 20 minutes, and that allows the additional 10 for Mark for your introductions and um, et cetera and our, our wrap up. So that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Tim, just real quick on that uh, town council meeting of the 30 minutes, um, there, th that allows time for questions and answers. They'll just add that to that time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tim, uh, at what point do we know where we stand on the agenda for the council? Well, that's a that's a great question. Um, so they passed the budget uh, this past Tuesday night that was not in sync with the mayor's budget. So the question becomes, is the mayor going to veto the budget? It has everything to do with what the priority becomes on the 25th. So, uh, but I will talk to uh, the council chairman um, and remind him of this 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 initiative and and see if we can't start with it as opposed to uh, have it lower on the agenda but <laughs> yeah you got to keep your fingers crossed on those so yeah just for the students edification a 6 30 meeting if, if we are not first on the agenda we could you know bring us up at 7 30 8 o'clock i mean yeah have a have a starbucks in your hand you may have to <laughs> Triple shot for until about midnight. So yeah, possibly. I'll try to convince him that setting the tone and it, it'll set a positive tone for the meeting if we go first. So we'll go. <laughs> but uh, all right, very good. Thank I'll, you, uh, Professor and students. I appreciate it, and we'll we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Thanks, yeah. thanks very much. Well the done. Rest of the members can stay on. We're going to move on with the agenda. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Tim, you're the host, right? Correct. Yeah. No. Okay, good. That's one of the reasons I wanted to make sure I was. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Fairfield, uh, Hartford County Business Journal. All right. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, we talked about this at the EDC meeting. Um, I, I thank Mark for engaging me in between marketing committee meetings. Um, but we did see a, a, an opportunity now that, um, you know, business activity has been vibrant, and I am excited to say that it's it's um, we, we're, we've got a fair amount of projects from, you know, small stuff to pretty good sized stuff to, to huge stuff, frankly, uh, in the hopper right now. So um, that, you know, it, as we came out of February, it was like, OK, things are really starting to pick up and wind up. So let's let's get back in the market with some advertising. So um, we do have with the Fairfield uh, County Business Journal and the um, uh, Westchester County Business Journal. We are doing the news at noon. If anybody wants to see any of those, Stacy can certainly forward them. 
but what it, what they are is, and it, we've done these before, but these are the email pushes that go out to almost 20,000 people at noontime every day between both of the uh, publications. And um, what we've got on there is, is, is Stacey, actually, let's, let's send one to the committee at some point so they can, they can see it. But we've got um, two blocks in the middle of this email push. One block on the left is an ad talking about Wallingford, something that you, know, you've, you guys have seen. And on the right is a direct link to our video that says, why would you want to you know, move your business to Wallingford? So um, this has not come without the rest requisite um, you know, growing pains. <laughs> so, uh, and Stacy has been uh, magnificent with that, but right down to the, you know, the ad fonts are too small. We, we, you know, we saw them, we said, they're not readable. You've got to make some amendments to that. To the fact that they uh, uploaded our video because of its size through YouTube. So then when you click on our video, you get a YouTube commercial before you get our video. <laughs> so um, we've had to go on back and say, okay, that's not going to work for us. We don't want the YouTube. So anyway, Stacy has been quarterbacking that. You have anything to add, on, add to that, Stacy? I believe as of yesterday, they have finally fixed both of them so that I'm going to check today. And as long as it's all fixed, I will forward that one. I appreciate it. Thank you. Stacy has been doing a magnificent job, by the way, for everybody's edification and uh, multifaceted. So thanks. Tim. Great addition to staff. Um, so that's that. And um, the Hartford Business Journal, uh, I had challenged them. This is even before, you know, in, in February, before we said, you know, let's let's reenter the market. But I had challenged them when they were asking to run some traditional stuff. I said, ah, I'm just I'm not going to do traditional stuff. I mean, you, you got to get creative. You got to do something different. So the objective is that all of our ads historically have been us, the EDC Marketing Committee, saying to the business world, "Why this is why you should move your business to Wallingford. So now we, I wanted to change it up and say, I want the business world to tell the business world why they should move their business to Wallingford. So let's talk to some of the businesses who have recently moved to Wallingford and, and let them do a testimonial campaign um, so um, that's the objective. We started with Hobbs and Motzer, who obviously put together a huge facility up in Barnes North uh, back in 2018. And um, uh, so we're putting the finishing touches on that as we speak. Uh, but what it'll do is we'll have a, a, um, a double truck ad, which is two facing pages uh, in, in print, but uh, more importantly, we'll do something electronically um, where on one side, we'll have we have a, a nice photograph. They sent you know photographers up to Hops and Monster. Anthony is in the in the photograph along with Bruce Dorak, the uh, president and owner, along with you know his leadership team. They've got a nice picture of them outside in front of the Hops and Monster sign, uh, and then underneath it, you know some qu quotes and comments from um, from that team saying this is why we decided this is why we moved our business to Wallingford, Connecticut, and then on a facing page we'll have. A regular ad that talks about you know location, access to workforce, you know low power costs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, stay tuned for final versions of uh, of that, um, and we we go from there. Any questions on that particular item? Okay, marketing specialist. Oh, okay. Um, so I think Stacy saw the uh, elation in my face yesterday when HR walked in with the uh, uh, job outline for this position. Um, it has been, uh, it has taken an exorbitant amount of time. I will, because we're in a public space, I will leave it at that. Um, but um, we, have, we are finally uh, gotten a commitment from them to have an ad in the marketplace by Monday. So. Um, all I will say is that uh, we put together a job description in March, and we'll have an ad in the paper uh, or out in the you know job boards, et cetera, on Monday. We will also um, uh, we will also take and make sure that we we have these things formatted, the job uh, formatted in such a way that we can put it out on all of our digital channels. So you know we'll take some responsibility for promoting that position as well. Um, it is a 19 hour a week position. Um, and, you know, the job is going to be, you know, managing uh, digital channels, managing digital channel messaging, 
Um, and so that, uh, you know, Anthony is, and, and others, Patricia, have made it very clear early on in this, this whole endeavor that you know, you, you've got to be consistent with messaging in terms of timing, and there's got to be a cadence to that. Um, we do not have that cadence right now, um, because as I mentioned earlier, you know, things have really picked up on, on, on the other side. Um, so finding the time to get all this stuff uh, accomplished has, has been, a, been uh, difficult, but uh, we got to get this person in so we can get that focus going. And um, um, so I would hope that, um, you know, by, you know, June or so, uh, we may have the, a good person in place. I will say that the biggest issue, number one by far, that I hear in the marketplace right now is companies cannot find help. So um, it is, uh, I, I, I was frankly went on a little bit of a rant yesterday at a, uh, uh, Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Committee meeting about the fact that, um, you know, institutions like the chamber uh, need to take and be uh, lobbying in Hartford to um, make some significant changes to get people back to work. You know, I've kind of grown tired of hearing everybody talk about restarting the economy when, you know, we can't get people off the couch. So it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a significant problem. But uh, that said, I'm hoping that we get some responses to the ad. I will tell you that other positions at Town Hall, um, the number one problem they're having is they're not getting responses for the jobs. So uh, it's, it's creating, Stacey, what did we hear yesterday? Our purchasing department is down to one person or something? Um, so. Yeah, um, we just heard that one of the ladies is stepping away. And so, yeah, we're gonna be down to one person and a filler. Yeah, and that's a four member department. So it's, um, Anyway, it's, we'll, we'll see what, what that happens, but you know, you're not, we're not going to catch the right person if we don't have a line in the water. So we got to get the line in the water and that uh, should happen uh, come Monday. So stay tuned for that. Tim, further to that, in your follow-up with the town council, your, your portion of town council, I would mention we're out looking for the specialist and that specialist is going to be working on the media and 19 hours, you know, that type of thing. It it, it does two things. Once is we're, we're not building a base and just abandoning it. I mean, we're, we're really going to work this base. Right. And the second thing is, I think it's a, it's a testament to the administration for um, putting the commitment behind this and, and the EDC for putting the commitment behind this to promote the town of Wallingford. And I think that's really important to have in your, in your talk at the end of the council meeting. Excellent, excellent point. Great opportunity to give them um, credit and thank them for supporting us through our, our budget because they've supported this position through uh, their their passing of our portion of the, the uh, their budget. So great, great point. Um, you know, Mark, with the uh, couple of minutes that we have left, mm -hmm. um, can we just talk about the the uh, SMT? So when we started this whole thing, we basically said it was going to come to, uh, um, you know, it would stop in May. Yeah, here we are. Right. So um, I'd like to just talk to talk to the group about, you know, what your thoughts are. I, I know several people, you know, Callum has already said, hey, I'm off and running in my business. So I, I suspect that's going to be a bit of a sayonara. Um, you heard today, Samantha is actually working with Callum. <laughs> you know, who knew? Right. So they, they met. Uh, in this committee, and now they've formed a business relationship. Uh, Samantha has also uh, applied for a job in South Korea to teach English, to uh, and which you know we have provided. I provided a, a reference letter for uh, for her for that. Um, so there's been a lot going on behind the scenes with with the team, which is really you know pretty cool stuff. Um, but at some point, I guess we have to say, all right, we're going to hit the pause button, and this has to do with you know compensating these folks as well. So we hit the pause buzzin button and we reemerge in September. I mean, what, what are our thoughts? Well, I'll lead off. I, I think that uh, we should continue um, and it's not now, but we have to develop a thought process of how we want to continue. I mean, the first part was we got to build the base. We're building the base now. And now how can we improve on the base? So I'm not quite sure we're going to utilize their time as much this next time as we have this past semester. Maybe we won't need as many students. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. 
You know, I think we have to sit down with the professor and, and get his ideas on what he thinks the next step for us is also. Um, uh, which brings me to the point too, Tim. Um, I'm not sure, we paid about $7,000 for this, right? Is that in total, is that what we did? Yeah. Um, I, I, in my mind, I think that's, that's an unbelievable price for what we got. I, I don't oh, think anybody, God, yeah. I don't think anybody could dispute that. Um, yeah. So I think at the town meeting you should mention that. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable mentioning it, um, I just think that you should mention that we got them at great value, and and that's it, mm -hmm. you know. But I think that that speaks volumes. If you say, look at this whole everything we just presented to you cost seven thousand dollars out of our budget. Um, this is how we spent our budget, your budget, mm -hmm. uh, council. I, I think it makes a big difference. So. Patricia, do you want to say something? I'm sorry. No, 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 I was just agreeing with you. You're absolutely right. Great deal. And, and we should mention it. And there's so many, like, a, you know, town. At one time, they thought we spent all this money on the billboard. And I'm realizing, you know, you got it for free. So, yeah, it's, it's good to have that information out there. Because we are we are very good with our money. Yeah. 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 yeah hey, Kim. Is... Oh, go ahead. I was I was going to say, you, you do have uh, underclassmen who are moving up. Um do we have the, uh, or, or should we maybe have some of these guys um, maybe make some recommendations for some additional, you know, kind of new blood people that they've, uh, you know, fellow students who they think uh, highly of, maybe get some recommendations, recommendations from them, and and some endorsements for working with the town on on the, uh, you know, a lot of people do internships. This is real life stuff. These guys are really doing what they would do in the field, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think it's, uh, I think that they got as much out of this, uh, plus a little, a little pocket change, very little pocket change, it seems. But um, I think it's a, uh, I think it's might be a good way to go to, to kind of bring in some new blood. Yep. Good point. Did you a comment? Uh, yeah, I was just going to make mention, and uh, I apologize. I wasn't at the last meeting. Uh, my apologies. And Tim, I did find the uh, link finally. It's the way my email server uh, hides previous emails. Anyways, um, following up on your point, at some point in time, I know we're measuring, we have metrics such as our conversion rate, our bounce rate, and some of these other metrics. But I think ultimately, have we come up with a some sort of a metrics, whether it's um, an inferred metric or an actual measurable metric that we can measure the entire impact of this program platform um, on, uh, on, 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 on versus what we used before on successfully bringing more businesses and interest to the town. Um, it's just, I'm just thinking of a question if I were on the council. Ultimately, I'd say this is great. Um, we have a lot more people looking at our sites and Instagram, but ultimately, What's the impact on what our initial objective was to bring more businesses and interest in, in, uh, into the town? Have we ever developed that metric yet? Or Yes. So, um, and it's, it's, it's about contacts. So it's about re outreach. It's going to be measured by, frankly, how many people do I get that are sending me emails that are reaching out through the channel saying, I want to talk to you about growing my business. Uh, how many, you know, what's my phone traffic like? So it's all about interactions. We're trying to create interactions with this office. Excellent. Okay. So that's great. And do we measure that, Tim? Do you do you have that? Last year we had uh, one thousand seven hundred. Yeah. Now this year we have two thousand five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So on the on the bottom of the monthly EDC report, there's a little little grid that talks about you know the different channels. Whether we got something through advertising, we'll have to take and reformat that. I think as time goes on, but that basically talks about different. Uh, you know, interactions that we've had on a monthly basis. And again, it's not a matter of pure numbers. I mean, it, it's, I mean, I've had months where I've had, you know, three interactions, but they're sizable companies. I mean, so, hey, I'll, I'll take, I'll take three big ones as, as opposed to, you know, 30 yeah. small ones almost any day, right? So good, good point. It's, it's, it's not purely mathematical. It's a matter of quality leads. So, and Samantha was the one that helped establish that criteria early on. It's, it's, we, we've got a, how are we going to measure our success? Well, we're going to measure our success based on the number of leads, but, but the number of quality leads that we're getting. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's the measure. And, and I will say we're seeing this, and, I, I, and Anthony, and I'm sure you're seeing this in your business as well. As, the, uh, as we move forward, we're seeing more and more young 
younger generation people move into the engineering roles and move into management roles. And we're seeing a continued shift from a, an older perception on how business is conducted to a newer perception, um, rightly, wrongly, whatever, but it, it's being, it's, it's happening and whether we, whether, uh, uh, for, for, for all the reasons of digit, digitalization of the younger generation. So I think, this is an issue, a platform that we had to take, and you're going to see continued success as we go on through the year. So it, I guess what I'm saying is this is a program that we need to give two or three years and really support it and then measure it. It's not something we can measure in, in, in only one year. So for all those reasons, I totally agree with Mark and, and you that we need to continue the, to invest and support this for at least another two more years. Yeah, you know, two, uh, two metrics we may want to think about, and it sounds like you're doing it now, Tim, is one metric is the number of touch points. In other words, how many times did my office get a phone call or an email or somebody met me on the street and said, you know, I want to talk to you about something, Tim. That's a touch point in my mind. And let's say for argument's sake, this past month you had 100 touch points. So at the end of the report you put in, I had 100 touch points. The other one would be um, the businesses that have actually – come out of a touch point. It may have been six months ago you had this touch point, but now the business has made the commitment and they're coming to Wallingford. And is that measurement that we should use tax dollars that it'll bring to the to the town? Um, is it the number of employees? Is it the size of the business? There's got to be one metric that says, yes, we had 20 of these small businesses that represent X amount of dollars, or we had three larger businesses that re represent X amount of dollars. I, I think that metric we have to decide upon that can be meaningful to somebody to understand and, and, uh, and then use that on a continuing basis, you know? Do I make sense or? Yep, yep. Um, the, the wheels are turning. The, the, the tricky part about using a grand list or, or um, direct taxation it gets it gets a little bit snarly in that you know the grand list is going to grow this year because of reevaluations, right? So th right. there's other there's other elements to grow in the grand list. So that that's an, the grand list is an indicator, but that that cuts both ways. If if the evaluation you know this being an evaluation year, if the evaluations happen to go down because of market conditions, so that as a result the grand list goes down. For example, every office building in Wallingford, their value went down significantly this past grand list. No, I understand. That doesn't mean that we're not doing our job, all right? And if, if they happen to go up exponentially, that doesn't necessarily mean we were we had any influence on that either. So I understand what you're saying. We've got to come up with some measuring sticks that, that you know, can almost directly, um, you know, we, we can directly relate to some of the activities that, that, uh, that we're pursuing. It, it's, it's certainly not a direct, uh, um, direct response medium that we're, you know, we're using. So we're, we're, we're basically, it's called, I look at it and say, this is brand expansion. All right. We started this whole thing by saying Wallingford is the oasis in the state of Connecticut. All right. We've got state agencies whose job, whose sole purpose is to promote this state beyond its borders to try to attract people to come in it. But as soon as they cross the border, they have a reputation that is extremely difficult to overcome. Mm -hmm. and, and it just, it stops conversations. So what we're saying is, as they go beyond the border, we're not discouraging them from doing their thing. And we want to make sure that we stay close to them and get any any crumbs we can from those uh, those efforts. But we're an oasis. We, we are so different here that we want to be out there doing the same thing they're doing. And, and digital is the best way to take and, and, again, expand the strength of our brand. We could have an impact. Hey guys, that, that, being, that, that being said, you, I mean, you gave the reason why we are doing what we're doing now, how we came to this point. But I think that we all should put our thinking caps on and think of some kind of a metric that we all can agree upon that can be described fairly easily. You don't want to get into craziness. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that says, and, and I agree with you on the grand list. There's no two ways about that. But some kind of a metric that says, I had so many touch points. That'll be an easy one for you because you, you had so many touch points. Yep. And the second thing is, well, those touch points represented this month with X amount of dollars or X amount of employees that came into the that are being hired within the town or some kind of a metric. I, I don't have that metric in my head, but that's yep. why I'm asking everybody to kind of think about that. Sure. Sure. I think I think one of the things is um, because of the work that they've done 
we're going to see more more people visiting the site. So we'll be able to see, you do get a record of how many people actually visit the site. Um, and as she mentioned at one point, it went from, I forget what she said, 30 seconds to a minute and something, or, or one of them did. So right. you can start to gauge how much time they're spending on what pages and what they're actually viewing. Who's actually going there? You are, will either get their, um, their, their, their IP number, or you may get, the name of the sites that are coming to visit you. I don't remember how that used to, how I used to set that up. Um, but that'll give you, you know, a good gauge to see J just that visibility, just the time that they're spending on there. Cause people don't, they do have a very short attention span. And if they are spending a minute or so on the site, that says a lot, you know? Right. Yeah. And I think ultimately we can even come up with our own metric, but to, to the point is we have to keep it simple you know, once this is a novelty to the council, and it could very well be over the next several years, we're going to want to expand this. We're going to want to ask for, go back to the council and ask for additional funds to create a more permanent position or maybe even expand that position. Um, so we need a simple metric that everybody is, it's its a, a, whatever that is, and we can combine it. We can make up a metric, a new metric, but it has to be something that we can tell them this is the success. It doesn't matter whether there's a, a billion people looking at our websites and spending hours a day if it doesn't translate to some sort of a success contribution to our tax base to Wallingford. So, um, and ultimately we, we have to make sure we, we come up with that and that we uh, keep, keep it simple, measurable. Um, so anyways, yeah. I think that does matter because we went from like 50 people a month looking at our site. If we go to like several hundreds, that is an achievement within itself. That really is visibility and people seeing what, what's going on and what we have to offer. And that may be part of yeah. the metric. Yeah, I guess. But I, again, ultimately, our, our, if it doesn't, our initial purpose was to, to bring more businesses to the town, create a higher, a better tax base, a more vibrant community. Ultimately, to my, my opinion, it's, if everybody in the world looks at our website, but it doesn't translate to, to fulfill any of the original uh, objectives, then it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's a, it's a nice well, exercise, but it doesn't, well, unless, unless we decide to change what our objectives are, but I'm just trying to uh, stay focused on our initial objectives. That's all. We yeah, can always no, I, change I, them if that's, you know. No, I get what you're saying. Going from nothing to something is something. It's, it, it's a lot. <laughs> it says a lot, you know. Well, I think you, you have the uh, objective of informing uh, anybody who is a potential candidate. So the success of the website and the number of hits you have and the quality of those hits is going to be one measure. And then your close ratio from those who actually engage and are interested, uh, and then how many of those actually result in a um, in, in in a business coming to town? I mean, that's really the you know where the rubber meets the road. But I think there are there are multiple uh, metrics you know that that you want to track. Uh, it's it's I don't want to say it's a numbers game, but on some level, it's a numbers game. You have you go from fifty hits a month on your website to seven hundred you know, the number that you close ought to go up, you know, and that should, should naturally show a result. Well, it, it should, Anthony. I'm just suggesting that we have to make sure it does. And if it doesn't, no, it, doesn't necessarily no mean that, it doesn't mean that we change. All that means is that perhaps if we're getting a lot more hips, but it's not translating to more businesses moving to town, uh, then we have to, it's just not, don't throw out the platform. It's how do we change the platform? Change Why the aren't they Correct. converting? So, you know, that's yeah. One thing we didn't do, which, yep. which I don't know, might be something that we might look into in the future is uh, to have a form on our little section there so that if you did want to contact Tim, hey, what's your business name? What are you looking for? Blah, blah, blah. That would give a direct direct link as to someone going on the site and a business looking to go further. And there, you know, there just is. to throw this up real quick, and I know time is of the essence, but um, I know when I go on to sites now, there's a lot of times where... Um, I'll have a little pop-up on the bottom uh, of a live person that says, hey, would you like to chat? So, yep. for example, okay. those are the types of programs where we may go back to the council and say, hey, we need somebody on a more permanent basis. We're getting more hits, but they're not converting. So do we have a person that's available to engage these people when they're actually live on the site? Um, but anyways, I, I, that's just a thought for another time, uh, more discussion in the future. Yep. Okay. Yeah, guys, we've gone a, a little bit over. I have to jump. I've got a, another meeting I need to prep for, and I and I do also. So I'm. Uh, I, have to start thank my you, work day. I thank everyone for joining the meeting, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Uh, good. Good, everybody, have a good week.
Great discussion. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later.